quick introduction. This is Austin. Yeah, he played with the Diamondbacks organization for three years. Yeah. Three years. Uh, I went to Nevada University, got drafted out of there, and since uh, his, he stopped playing baseball, he's moved over to the mental side of the game, and now it's uh, been a great resource for us and me to be able to reach out and ask questions, and today he's going to share some of that knowledge that you guys can take to your game and help uh, prepare yourself not mentally, you guys are doing all the physical stuff here, so now you got the mental side as well that you guys can use when you guys go to play. Because once you're in the box or on the mound or in the field, the mental stuff really where you have, where what we really got to be able to control, so we can use that physical stuff that you guys have been preparing for all off season. So, Austin, take it over. Appreciate it, Austin. Yeah, guys. So Austin Byler, grew up in Arizona. A um, few of you guys were here last time. Him talk probably about a month or two ago. Um, we talked a lot about confidence. Identity, like discovering who we are. I think it's a big part of the game. You guys are learning that here with Rossi, doing your weight training, doing your fall like programs and all the baseball stuff that you do already on building confidence. But now our goal is to complete package everything together. If this side, like it doesn't seem important sometimes, but it's the most important part of your life. Not just baseball, not just football. Like when you're out there, like this thing separates you from everybody else and your next level of business in your next school events, your next test that you have, whatever it may be, this thing controls everything. So a little bit about me guys, grew up in Arizona, I didn't have a scholarship offer in high school until after my senior season. I was hitting 580, I was playing at 10-0 I essentially walked like three times. I let off and got essentially walked. It was weird, no scholarships. So I'm sitting there at that age, like, gosh, people don't believe in me, they don't think I'm good enough, they don't think I belong at the next level. So maybe some of you are sitting here without a scholarship, without an opportunity, but all your friends have opportunities. You know, like, man, I work harder than you, I'm better than you, I'm better person than you, I, I put in more work than you, and you got the opportunity, now. I don't have the opportunity. So it kind of started then, where I started to feel this side of the game, but I was super angry, because I let it get to me, I was pissed. Like, it sucks that every time I get out, I snap a bat, every time I get out, I curse, and get up shit. And I go crazy, right? I have like this rage inside of me. And so I didn't sign with the University of Nevada until like, the week after our championship game. We lose the championship game, the next week I fly to Nevada to take a visit, sign a contract, and it's like, all right, now you got the summer, and now it's time to go. Now you're going to college. Like, if your dream is playing Division I baseball, it's here. I didn't think I was even going to play. I was so nervous. I'm like, man, I've been all this work, I'm not going to play. And next thing you know, you get this opportunity, and now it's what do you make of that opportunity, right? So going into Nevada, and this is kind of how I got onto the mental side of the game. That first year, did all right. A pretty decent season. Um, four home runs, like 260, 280 as a freshman. I got to play 45 games or so. Pretty good, a good impact as a freshman going into a Division One college uh, in a good conference. And uh, I knew there needed to be changes for me to stick around and for me to take that next step in my game. And thankfully, that first summer, I went to Klamath Falls, Oregon. Nobody here knows what Klamath Falls, Oregon is. There's no way. It's at the very bottom of Oregon. And it's this little small town, maybe 10,000 people get that. And middle of nowhere. And I got to meet a couple coaches. And one of these coaches named Aaron Nielsen. And this guy, actually a mutual friend of ours, helped coach Rossi as well when he was playing football. And this guy is incredible. So this one attests to people like Rossi in your life right now who are positive mentors that are going to help you get to that next level. They're here to help you progress and keep getting better and better and better to ask questions. So I meet this guy, I'm reading a book, really trying to focus on the mental side. I'm like, I don't know anything about it, but I just want to learn. You know, I just want to get, get something out there, like calm my thoughts. And he comes up to me, he's like, dude, what are you reading? I'm like, that's Josh Hamilton's book. You know, it's about his drug addiction and, and everything that happened in his life. And I'm like super locked in. He's like, oh, really? What do you think about it? We start talking, you know, conversating about it. He's like, well, I really want to help you with this side of the game. I want to help you, like, understand your thoughts and why you feel certain things and how you can take this to the game. To help you be a better ball player and just not just that but a better human being and so we started to talk about that throughout the summer long story short great summer crushed it like all-star we won like 18 games in a row after losing the first 18 which is just weird uh, a lot of guys are in the big league now like Tom Sessionman and a couple other guys Eric Yarby you guys probably don't know them but they just broke the seal of the big leagues and at the time they're just young kids out of high school just like you guys are I mean everybody that's in the big leagues or in college baseball right now is just for you in a town here, sitting here, trying to learn and get better. 
and the more we keep an open mind, the more we can get better. So then I go into the college that next year, I'm crushing it. The sophomore year, I'm like 345, 350, eight bombs, like a little over halfway through the year. I got a call from my coach, hey, you're gonna play on Team USA. If you keep this up, you're gonna play on Team USA. I like, go to, I don't think it was Japan next year or something. And I'm sitting there like, oh my gosh, dude, like, I'm gonna make the big leagues. Like, I'm gonna be the best player in the world. Let's go. The confidence is sky high, I'm gonna get hurt. Back hurts. And I'm like, gosh, what happened? Back hurts. Like, it just gets worse and worse and worse. And I'm like an old man, dude. Like, I'm screwed. I can't walk up the stairs, right? And it's just it's impacted my whole mental game. And I'm like, I'm going to keep playing. I'm going to keep playing. So I have like a peg leg at third base. I'm trying to play third base. I'm walking around. I can't move. I'm still hitting okay. I'm like, it's all right. So from there, how I started to cope with that was through medication. So I started this addiction, quote unquote, that you'll find out about more in my life through that little injury. Instead of taking the, the mental game route like I wanted to take, I took a different route and started to self prescribe myself and be like, okay, I need this to help me play. I need this to help me play. And so I started taking pain medication because it's the only thing that got me in the game. It's the only thing that kept me in the game and ready to go. So long story short, get through that season, go play a summer ball, Cape Cod League, we win the championship. Everything was good. It was awesome. Super proud. Go back to my junior year, I'm crushing it, having a great year, but mentally it was still a work in progress. Thankfully, we had people like this coming in, teaching us visualization, teaching us positive affirmations, teaching us goal setting, core values for our life. And, and these people just kept putting these little nuggets and they're planting these little seeds in my head and starting to grow and grow and grow. So I get to that junior year, and next thing you know, it's draft day. And I'm like, all right, everything I've ever wanted in my life, like it's draft day. And people are saying, you're going to go third round, fourth round, fifth round. Like, don't worry, you're going to get drafted in these rounds. And first day goes by, and the next day goes by, I'm getting nothing at all. It's like the first six, seven, eight rounds. I'm like, what's going on? I ended up getting drafted by the Nationals in the ninth round. And I'm like, this sucks. This is not how I expected draft day to go. I thought I was going to be a fourth or fifth rounder, maybe even third rounder. I'm going to get all this money and all these motives that were so selfish of me internally, like these selfish motives that, uh, that I could only think about for myself. And ended up getting drafted and having a great opportunity. And I it took it down to the wire July 15th, final day to get signed. And I was like, I'm going back to school. I don't know what it was in me. We had Coach Johnson, University of Arizona, come out, flew out. I took the time out of his life, his day, to come out on one night. Like one night's notice, said, Coach, I'm going to sign. He's like, No, you're not. Like, I'm going to come out there. I'm gonna, we're going to talk this through and make the right decision for your life. Flew out there. We met together. Ended up going back to school. Another long story short, we drafted that year, but the Diamondbacks play the last three years with them. Okay, so in Pro Bowl, I get to Pro Bowl, right? And like everywhere you go, there's these little destinations that you end up getting, and in your mind, they seem so far away. Like it seems so far away. Right now, like some of you younger guys who aren't even in high school yet, or just first year of high school, it seems so far away. Even your varsity year seems so far away. And all these things are happening, and I just played D1 baseball, and I just got drafted two dreams of mine, twice, and now I'm playing professional baseball. And that first year, crushed it. Like 18 bombs, tied Goldie's record, uh, like the most walks in the league as a first baseman, and so power hitter having the most walks, all these crazy stats. I'm like, boom, back on track, I'm going to the big leagues. Well, two months later in the fall, October, a week before my birthday, so like October 8th or 7th, I get a call, I, I just leave the game, we're in, uh, uh, oh, what's it called? Uh, instructs. So instructs is where they invite usually 25 to 30 guys back who had usually pretty good years and guys that they want to keep in the system for that next year. And they invite them back to play in double-A or play competition. Like Archie Bradley was on my team. You got David Peralta taking rehab hacks. Like, it was pretty cool. Like Archie Bradley threw a pickoff to me at first and I missed it. <laughs> and my coach goes, you better not have to miss this ever again. Anxiety, fear, I'm like, oh my gosh, I better not mess up. We'll get to this a little later, but we're going to talk about today is those emotions that kind of hold us back. But this coach is like yelling in my face, you don't miss that, you don't this. The coolest part was Archie comes up to me, like, dude, don't even worry about that. Like, it's okay. We all mess up, we all miss something, we all like, something happens in our life. It's okay. So I get there and dump the game, four for four, great game. And our, our scouting coordinator is sitting out there and he's like, Father, I got from the mob. I'm like, oh no. He goes, you failed the drug test. Test, what do you mean? And he said, You failed the drug test, you're done for 50 games. And I'm like, Holy shit. What? 
50 games. I'm doing the math in my head. I'm supposed to start with high. I should be in double A by this time. This and that. Like everything that I had scripted in my head of where I thought I was supposed to be was gone. Like it was done. And I'm having this great year. Everything's amazing on the outside. But internally, I'm like battling a demon. It was, like, it was terrible. Like I'm, I can't even move. I have all this anxiety. And after that drug test feeling, anybody who ever called me, anytime I got a phone call, a text, or anything, my body just like, Rossi says to hold a plank. He felt like I was holding a plank for my life. Like, Don't fall. That's how it felt. It was horrible. And that feeling did not leave for the next two and a half years of my life. And that's why, for me, I'm so passionate about the mental side of the game because I believe this is the one side that can help free you of your own uh, restraints, like of your own barriers that you're setting on yourself. And some of you may not be experiencing any of this. Some of you may get up to the plate and you've got extreme anxiety, extreme fear of whoever's on the mound. The big lefty, he's really good. He's number 15 in California, whatever it may be. He's better than me. I don't belong. Like, these are real thoughts. This stuff comes up in our mind. So, getting through all of that, like the short version of the story, the, the moral of that story is that you decide your own destiny. Like, you decide where you want to go in your life. Like, you are in control of your journey for the most part. Like, you can put yourself in the best position to succeed as long as our mind's right. As long as it's six inches within our head and our, within our ears, it's right and, and locked in. So that's what we're going to hopefully learn today. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about emotions. Before we get there, I want to kind of draw off of a little description of what I'm, what I'm talking about here about our journey. So we all start here. Next marks the spot. You are here. We all start somewhere, right? We've all got the starting position. So your starting position is right here. Like 10.30 a.m., Rossi training. Saturday, I, it's not a beach day because it's cloudy. I bring the clouds every time I land. So I'm like, dude, I bring the clouds here, so I'm sorry. But like, it's a Saturday. You're like, you guys could be doing something better with your time. But you're here, which is awesome. So you want to get better. So we're starting here. Your version, your current version of yourself. Then we've got this journey. Originally, I drew this journey line straight, but it's not a straight path, right? It's not a straight narrow path. Like it's more like this, it's wiggly, all over the place. We've got these peaks, we've got these little valleys right here where we either start like mentally just broken down. So you've got your journey, boom, your starting point. This is where I am. I got my awesome body arm right here. This is what I did last year. Like This is who I am right now. And we've got this journey. Life likes to, or people like to make it seem out to be a straight line in my journey, that I'm just gonna keep going straight, I'm just gonna keep cruising through life. But in reality, it's more like this. We're in the weight room, we're struggling. Maybe one day I hit my max squat. Maybe the next day on deadlifts, I can't get it up and I have to drop it. And I'm pissed because I didn't hit my goal. Or I didn't hit my PR, my max. You know, like I have to try to hold the plank for 30 seconds and I can't get there. And I just drop. These are our different peaks and valleys of our life. But at the end, this is our destination. How many of you guys want to play collegiate baseball? Everybody, right? Everybody wants to play collegiate baseball at any level. How many of you want to play at a high D1? What about in the College World Series? That's pretty dope. That's really dope. What about major league baseball, playing professionally, having an organization, the, we'll say the Giants or the A's here, I like baseball better, I don't like the Giants, but Giants or A's, they draft you, they're like, hey, Andrew, like, you're coming with us, 15th round, we need a new shortstop, I want you on the team, like, I want you in an organization where we help you get to the big league, that's pretty cool, right, that's our destination, so in our minds, this is that end goal that we have, the problem with this is, that on this wall right here, this wall of our journey, a lot of the times we stop right before we get to that destination. We stop. Like, I don't know what it is. It's something internally that just tells us, no, like, you can't keep going any longer. And we listen to that. It's like the little devil and the angel on our shoulder, the little devil over here saying, dude, you can't do this. You're not good enough. You don't belong here. You're not worthy of being a professional baseball player or a college athlete. Like, you're not that good. Everybody around you is so much better than you. 
everybody around you deserved more than you. You only went two for four, you didn't go four for four like Johnny did. And his mom's over there, woo, Johnny, a great job. Like, no, that happened. So we started listening to this side, or we listened to that little angel, like, hey, you just keep going. One more rep, one more mental tip, one more visualization exercise, one more affirmation, like, one more step forward, and you're going to get to your journey. There's a little uh, description of like this guy taking a little, I'm going to say jackhammer, but whatever those little pickaxes, the pickaxes. I'm not very good at the outdoor stuff. Fine. My brother's really good at that stuff. Okay. And he's taking this pickaxe and he just stops. He starts dragging his blanket and walks back. And he's done. He's like, I'm done. I've got as far as I can go. That's as far as I can go. Like, I'm content with that. And I'm done. You know, I'm just going to retreat, grab my blanket, and I'm done. That's where most people go with their lives. For most athletes, but that's why a lot of guys don't make it to the big leagues because they get so far and they just stop working. They stop putting in the effort. They stop showing up early. They stop taking care of their body. You guys are doing some foam rolling here. They stop doing that. All the essentials that got us to where we are and where we want to go are working, and then we just stop for some reason. We just we just eliminate. Instead, there's this other little dude who just keeps chipping away. He keeps chipping away. He's that scrappy guy. He's consistent. He keeps chipping. He keeps chipping. He on that other side of that wall, where this guy, like a stick figure, he walks back. Well, this little dude, he keeps pushing forward. And what this dude didn't see is this oasis over here, where your destination is, the big leagues. Say, I can put MLB over here so you can see the visual. visual. Say we want to be in the MLB. We're going we're gonna to dream big, because each one of you needs to dream big. It is essential to your life. No matter what it is, dream big. We got our MLB here. Johnny here got his AAA, and he's like, "Screw it, I'm done. I'm gonna cave into the world. I'm gonna go drink with everybody else. I'm gonna go hang out with girls and party. And it's not that big of a deal. And my life will move on." He ends up going backwards. He's done. He's, he's given up on himself. He's given up on his life. We got this other little dude. We'll say uh, Andrew. Andrew keeps chucking along, one inch at one inch, one inch away, one inch at a time. He keeps showing up, doing the right things. He keeps showing up in the weight room. He keeps asking people like Rossi, like uh, Trotsky, I see that shirt, like, great resource for you. Like all these different people that are little positive mentors in our life, they keep asking questions, keep getting better, building our mental toolbox. Next thing you know, he pushes through this wall, this barrier that seems so far away when you start here. Like look at that, that's a, that's a lot of distance to cover. So you've come a long way so far before your season. When we get right here, it's pushing through, it's breaking through. It's like Humpty Dumpty, it's off the wall. Like I'm breaking through that wall. Like I'm pushing through that wall. I'm pushing through everything that we experience on a daily basis and getting through that wall. So I wanted to give you a visual of what it looks like before we really get into the emotions aspects of things because we all start somewhere. I don't care who you are, I'm still evolving. We all evolve as people. Each one of us is evolving over time. I don't know it all, you don't know it all. Rossi doesn't know it all, we're learning. Constantly learning, we're building our, our toolbox. We get to this journey, and it's squiggly lines all over the place. This thing's moving, man. It's like those little uh, printer things. <laughs> They're going all over the place. Uh, and, and we just, we're trying to ride the wave. We're really trying to ride the wave and stay consistent throughout our life. Getting through here with our preparation on the field, off the field, mental game, physical game. It all correlates to that complete package of a player to where you're set up for the most success you can possibly have. And then you've got that wall that you're pushing through. Maybe your destination is just, I want to go play junior college baseball. Maybe you just want to go play at San Jose City College and like, that's your destination. That's, that feeds my, feeds my passion, feeds my happy score. Then that's Juco baseball right here. That's your destination. Keep chipping away, keep pushing for that goal. Keep pushing towards it because maybe when you push towards that goal, you get something bigger. Maybe something greater comes out of your life or in your game. So I want to just put that up there for you so that you can see, and I'll drink some of this nonsense here, but I'm going to leave this up so that we can think about that. Just kind of throughout the rest of the time, think about what it takes to, one, not only just get to your destination, but two, how close you are. You're only a couple years away. Who's, who's a senior? Is there any seniors here? Okay, two seniors. Juniors, a couple of juniors, the rest of you guys sophomores, freshmen in the eighth grade. Okay, so you guys are right there, one, two, three years away, four years away from being potentially in the MLB, 
potentially in the NCAA, playing somewhere at a high level. So what are a few of the things that kind of trip us up? <clears throat> the whole practice is that we're going to practice mindfulness and the ability to lock in our mind and our thoughts at the same time and be in sync with our body. If our mind's in the right place, our body's in the right place. Vice versa, if our body's in the right place, usually our mind's in a pretty good place because we work hard for it. We look in the mirror and we're like, man, I'm a beast to buy Santa. I'm out at Santa Cruz, I'm cruising along with all the homeless people down there, like, I'm tricep, what up, dude? You know, like, it's just natural, right? We train our body to look good, feeding our confidence, right? Our soul. So, we've got the middle, the present. This is when you are in the zone. I'm gonna put a little deal here, the zone. Yeah, how many of you guys have heard of the zone? Like being in the zone. Like Mamba mentality, Kobe Bryant, Clay Thompson. Like I'm in the zone, that just feels good. Like my breathe, like I don't even have to. Like, it's just boom, it's automatic. Steph Curry shoots it up from half court, like with one leg, he's making it. That's the present. That's where we want, that's our goal, that's where we want to be. Ideally, we're probably not gonna be there every time. But that's where we're going to be all the time. Then, we got the emotion of fear. Fear. What is fear? It's based on what fear is. You can take your best guess, it doesn't have to be perfect. Anything. <clears throat> yeah? Maybe like the fear of just like not knowing. Maybe yeah. just not knowing anything. Not being insecure about the future or something like that. Very nice. Insecure about the future. I love that. Insecure about the future. Insecure is a big word, I like that. What else? What else do we got about fear? What else can, can kind of cause fear uh, in the future? Anything in the future that's out there for you guys? Fear of a mistake. Fear of a mistake. We've all been here, haven't we? Right? We've all feared making a mistake, whether it's in a summer ball game, like 1 p.m., or it's a championship game from a high school season, like, or a big travel tournament. Like, we've all had a fear of don't even fall. Whatever you do, dude, I'm having a great day. I'm three for three. I made one nice backhand in the hole. I don't want this ball. Like, I'm done, coach. Like, don't give me this. I'm on my heels. Or even at the plate, I'm three for three, and I'm good. Check the bat, check all the boxes. Double, a single, a home run. I don't want the triple. I don't want that fourth that bat because it might affect my game or affect my average or whatever that may be. I don't, I don't need that last that bat. I'll hang my hat on those three ABs that I had that were so quality and so good. I'm so locked in. I don't want that fourth that bat. That's that fear. Fear of making a mistake. Insecurity about the future. So, before we continue, I want to kind of just give you a little insight on the mind. So, we our default programming mode of the mind. And this is 10,000, 20,000 ever since humanity was created. When humanity was first created, we were little cavemen and we were evolving. Fear existed because it warned us of danger, the danger that lied ahead. If I'm walking around and I don't know what's in those bushes up there, it could be a lion, it could be a crocodile, I hate those things, it could be a snake, I freaking hate those too, a gorilla, something's over there moving. In the, in the near distant future, and it's causing this fear, and like it alerts our body. So, so when you feel fear, it's natural. When you feel fear, like we all experience that. Every human in this world, no matter how much you want to say they're so tough and mentally locked in and blah blah blah, like they are experiencing fear at some aspect, at some level in their life. Some more than others. It's just how we let it control us. So, when we're young, we naturally fear. Fear what's ahead of us. Fear the future. When you're in this age, you're still fearing the future. What happens this season? What happens in the fall? I don't have any offers. What happens if Grand Canyon comes out here and they don't like me? What happens if ASU comes out and I don't do well? Like, I'm fearful. And it, it affects our abilities to perform at our highest level. It affects how we act every single day. It affects how we perform on that given day. How many of you guys have been to a showcase? Or are going to a showcase soon? Anything in the future maybe about a showcase? Some of you guys will probably go when you get older. I mean, Arizona showcase, I'm sure you guys will probably go out to one of these. And, and the toughest thing being there, like the personal experience was, you're a sophomore, and 
the senior classic, so there's all these older guys, and you have, you look in the stand, and you see a Cincinnati Reds hat, you see an Arizona Diamondbacks hat, it's a checkboard, and it's got, usually they're overweight, they're just sitting there, and like, mm -hmm. marking you off the list, you know, like, it's just natural, I don't know why they do that, but then you've got an Arizona hat, like U of A, you got a couple of junior colleges, you got a D2, it's a smaller school that you've never heard of, with like a C on their hat, you've got all these hats, right, all these people that are out there watching, and, and odds are they probably aren't even watching you. They probably came to watch the big lefty pitcher that's pitching in the sixth inning and then they're all gonna leave. But with that lefty pitcher who brought all these scouts there just to watch this one guy. And that may be you and it may not be. You may be on either spectrum of that. But we look into the stands and we're like, oh my gosh, there's so much, there's all these really cool schools that I wanna go to that all I gotta do is do good today. If I do good today, I'm gonna get the email that they want me to come to their camp and then I'm gonna sign for them and everything's good and great. Well, in reality is we get up there and we're so fearful of what these guys are thinking of us that we let it impact how we perform on the field. So that other person's opinion, so fear of other people's opinions, impacts how we play. The fear of what somebody else thinks of us, no matter if it's good, bad, or indifferent, no matter what that may be, can impact our performance on the field. A coach. I've had some of the greatest coaches in the world. I've had some of the worst coaches in the world. One of the coaches that I really don't like is ironically in the big leagues. And I don't know how, but he's still there. And this guy gave me so much fear and anxiety on every single day that now I want to make sure that you don't experience the same fear and anxiety of making a mistake. Right? Making a mistake, boom. Or being insecure about if you're ever going to play going from the best player on the team to having to come off the bench and being literally the last resort with 10 to 15 dudes getting called up from short season A, low A, all these different programs in your organization to take your spot. And you're right there, just watching it happen. Never experienced it until one of my last years in pro ball. So now, what the heck, I'm right here. So I'm jump up and down, I know you're right here. But um, like in turn, man, gosh, I don't even want to go out there. Like, I'm so closed off. Like, to spread our wings, to spread our chest, like, stick our chest out, everything we do in here, like, let's freaking show that off and show who we are. And then we'll hear about other people's opinions. So, this fear, this underlying fear, can really hurt us as athletes. It can really hurt our performance on the field. And, and I think, like, for you, what are some of the things that made you fear? And this is, you're skin ball and it's okay, like, we're in a post that we <coughs> consider this family, like, this is good for people to hear what other people are feeling because if somebody doesn't want to say anything, they're a little nervous or scared or whatever, maybe they fear what one of us thinks. There's no wrong answers here. No wrong answers at all. This is for your, your betterment and like for your good. So what are some other things that we fear, uh, maybe performance-wise, in any game or throughout the season? Yeah. Not coming through when the team needs you to. Coming through, but striking out with base loaded, or, yeah, you know, yeah. popping out when you know you need to get that run for, for example, failing in clutch situations. That's a big one. Any type of failure, right? Like two outs, face of juice, bottom of six. There's nobody else that's gonna play. I mean, <laughs> it's me, all right. I guess it's time to go. Oh, shoot. What if these guys don't like that? What if I fail for these guys? What if I like, fail for the coach in the third base box who got his hand on the shoulder because it's been a bad game? It's a knee mugging, right? And you're sitting there like, oh my gosh. You get fearful, right? And like, all of a sudden your shoulders go to your ears <laughs> and you're like, oh. like the Hulk. That's real. Fearing those clutch situations, you know, it's tough. But guess what, when you were, say six to eight, nine, ten years old. And how many of you guys visualize yourself in a World Series? Or visualize yourself in the college world series? Visualize yourself hitting a bomb, right? Like even if it was against I'm gonna say Randy Johnson because he was a local in Arizona and he was just a beast. But for you guys, like maybe it was Tim Lin Tim Linson coming in his prime. Like maybe it was just visualizing you hitting off him or like, well what would it be like to hit off him? Now it's like you're all this chat. Like I instantly got fear. I got a sense of anxiety down my spine. I think all this chatting on the mound, Cuban Missile, 
And I got the Cuban missile looking at me, and I'm like, oh my goodness, this guy's throwing one on one, and I'm left handed, and that's not going to be fun. That's fear right there. Just like your opponent, right? You go out on Thursday night, you're playing a game, and the big scouting guy has got all these stupid wars and all this. All this nonsense noise, this external noise that has nothing to do with who you are and what you can do on the field. It's all surrounding this guy. I'm mean, like this. We have to portray him as this godly character. You know, like this dude who's just incredibly gifted. Like, there's no way I'll ever be that good. And he's on the mound, and now we're fearing that. So, fearing those clutch situations, fearing making a mistake, other people's opinions, and then the insecurities about failure. So, that's our fear. And that's very prevalent. That, that, that's definitely current for you, like all of us are experiencing some sort of fear. And then we get to the past. So our past is the anxiety. The anxiety or the worry. The worry that you can kind of see. We go back to our the brain's default mode. We are all programmed that an underlying cause of anxiety. Like, ever since we were cavemen, we were walking through, we saw the fear in front of us, but we also worried about what's behind us, right? So you picture me standing in the present moment, and, and soon, one of these days, I'm gonna bring some hula hoops in and just give you the visual. But imagine three hula hoops. There's a hula hoop in front of me, I'm in the middle one, the hula hoop behind me. I'm in the middle, I'm in the present moment. This is like my zone. This is my best self. I can move here, I can, I can do my thing. I'm not constrained by anything. Nothing's holding me back. There's no chains on the leash. You know? like I can do my thing. I can be who I am. In front of me, there's that fear. Fear component that we just talked about. Making them make a mistake or other people's opinions. But behind us, if I take that step back, that's that anxiety. I'm living in the past. It's the worry of what if it happens again? Like, what if this mistake happens again? I already made an error today. I don't want to make another error. I'm super anxious. Please don't hit me the ball. Just don't hit me the ball. I'll make the play tomorrow. I'll be I'll be there, coach, tomorrow. You put me back in a shortstop. I'll make that play tomorrow. But today, like, I'm done. Like, don't hit it to me again. Whatever you did, please. That's that anxiety factor. So what kind of gives us anxiety? There's, I'll put one down of just making a mistake again, or making continual mistakes, or Failing again. But what else can give us a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of like worry or doubt, self-doubt? Yeah. Maybe if your coach has like a quick hitter, so like mm -hmm. you can make that error to get you up. Mm. That is huge. I'm gonna put that in a box maybe because that is in check market, that is huge. That is so big, right? Because now a coach, we know in the back of our mind, in the subconscious mind, we know that our coach has a really quick trigger and that, gosh, he, Johnny made a mistake, he got yanked. Angelo made a mistake, he got yanked. What if I make a mistake? Now I'm getting yanked, right? Or if I don't come through the clutch in that fearful state, now I'm worried, because I'm like a ticket out of the game. It, it goes hand in hand, right? So the coach, like coach had a huge, huge, huge responsibility to instill confidence, instill gratitude, instill um, a sense of belief in you guys. That's what we're here for, to instill a sense of belief. So when you go out there, we don't worry about the other two. And I'm not gonna say don't worry. Should I say don't worry? Like, it's like a pink elephant. Don't think about a pink elephant. Now I've got this big Dumbo in my head, it's pink, and it's got a weird squiggly tail, and I'm in Disneyland on the ride. And my mind just goes crazy, right? So when you tell somebody not to think about it, initially, immediately they're gonna think about it. It's just human nature. So when the coach has a quick trigger, how can we combat that? How can we go against the grain and not let this affect us as much? It still may be there, it still may be a little underlying effect, but we still might sense it sometimes, but how do we overcome this? Anything about it, no rest. Doesn't have to be a perfect answer, but how can we overcome a coach having a quick trigger? Yeah. You just play the game that you know how to play? Mm. Just play the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, 
play the game. I'm going to say play a kid's game. Because in reality, this is just a kid's game, right? Most of us play Little League. Most of us had so much fun in Little League because nothing mattered. Coach's opinion didn't really matter at that time. Some coaches were overbearing, but most of them didn't really care about your actual performance. They just wanted you to do good and have fun. It's like when you're 10, 11, 12, 8, 9, keep all, you're just going out to have fun. Nobody even cares if you run the right way on the bases. And you got a kid running to third base after they hit the ball. He's like, yeah, and mom and dad are still like standing up. Oh, let's go. Good job, Johnny. Um, play the kid, play a kid's game. Play the game and have fun. Like, never lose to have fun. Once again, much easier said than done. Because some of you may have coaches right now that they've got a little trigger and they have some negative opinions about you. And now you're caught in this fearful state, you're jumping between the hoops. You're like, gosh, I'm in fear, I'm in anxiety. I'm like, I don't know where to be. I don't know what to do. Even in football. And football, the one thing I hated about when I played football for three weeks on the dock, and once we got the pads equipped, <laughs> because I got thrown up against the wall and tackling practice, and I was freaked out, I'm like, dude, my coach was like, you need to yell. If you're a quarterback in the D-line, you're like, you need to yell. You need to be like this or that. Like, tell me all these things that I need to be. In reality, I didn't need any of that. Like, I don't need all this crazy nonsense. Like, you need to keep doing up downs in 115 degree weather. Dude, save it. But when we go out there, how can we get back to that present moment? It's like, all right, acknowledge this. Experience this. We must experience our emotions to go through them. A lot of people are going to say, don't think about being <coughs> Don't think about having guilt or shame that you made a mistake. Yes. Uh, sorry, I was going on a little tangent. You no. were like, have fun. Like, yeah. when you were playing, you talked about, like, you had, like, the last two and a half years, you had that, like, fear, or, like, what, what was that word you used for the last, like, two and a half years of mm -hmm. playing professional baseball? You had just, like, the... Like, super... Anxious, anxious strength, okay. but like feeling bottled up so and closed off, I guess, really yeah. closed off. So like during that time, were you having fun playing baseball or like no? And like what does someone have to do if they're in that position to get back to just having fun playing a kid's game? Mm, really good question. Really good question. I think two keys. One, know yourself. Like know who you are. So that's tough to do. Like, we've got to know who we are. Got to literally like self reflect. It takes a mature person to do that, but we've got to self reflect. So we've got to write down why do we play the game. I'm gonna write this. That's really good. So one, why? Get back to our purpose, right? Our destination. Like why are we playing in the first place? So we've got to understand why we play. And two, surround yourself with positive influences on the team. Maybe 95% of the team hates being there and they're like, this coach made this game so unappealing to you and you're not having any fun at all and you're like, this sucks, I'm so tired of this. But there's still somebody on the team, I can guarantee you, that still wants to play. That still wants to achieve more and still knows the destination up here. So surround yourself with positive influence. This is a super good question. Positive. And that can even be, like, maybe if you have a really good relationship with your family, go to your parents. Go to your grandma, grandpa, and, like, just telling them, like, getting it out there. Because the one thing I did that I regret is I kept it all inside. I let it fall all inside me until it was too late. And the only thing I could mask was the outside external causes that were just edging into my body that were hurting me, like, rather than helping me. But in my mind, I thought it was freeing me of the fact that I had a lot of fear, I have a lot of anxiety from my coach. So for you, like, if you're in that situation, or if you know people who are in that situation, or if you ever experienced that situation, like, first and foremost, get back to our why. Why do we play? Maybe I play, for me, I play for my brother. My, my little brother, Marcus, he's 16 now. He's autistic, he's adopted. He adopted when he was one. He shouldn't be alive. Like, his mom pushed him around. He like, just had a safe way here. They were like Whole Foods, push them around in one of those little carts, naked body as a bare baby, like straight out of the womb, nothing around him, nothing to protect him, you know, nothing to keep him safe. 
just put him in the car and push this kid around. And uh, he almost died. So now nervous when he got him, he was like, my feet. And the dude was almost a year old. He was super, not even this big. Insane. So he's never had the opportunity to go do what you guys do. He's never had the opportunity to do what I got to do. And so every day, and it wasn't every day, so I can't say it every day, but every time that I got into a negative mindset, or a fearful state of mind, or an anxiety fearful state of mind like of that, where you're like, I'm just so done, like I'm so over this. Self-reflection, take some maturity, not easy, it's not gonna happen overnight, but we can work on it. Write down why you play the game. Put it on the bill of your hat. Put it on the bill of your hat. And now every time you're on the mound, or you're at the plate, or you can't do the plate, but you're in the field after a bad at bat, and you're like, I just hate this, like kick in the dirt, blah, 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 like maybe I'm crying, like well, I don't know what it is. I take off my hat and I look and I'm like, Marcus, ah, Marcus, ah, that's why I play. That was my why, that's my purpose. I wanna do everything I can in my power to make him feel fulfilled that I'm doing what I love him. He'd come out and fear no battle. He'd be fired up just to come out there take the bat, woo, and like we did a home run, and I'd give everybody else one of these, and then I'd go get him one of these, you know, like, pump them up. So whatever your why is, maybe you want to play for your family, maybe you want to play for yourself. Maybe it's like, I just want to prove people wrong because I know who I am, and like, I've been underrated for so long that I want to achieve greatness, and I'm going to. Like, put it on your hat, whatever that why, whatever your purpose is, so you never forget it. You never forget it. Take anything out of the day, now that you brought that up, like, put the why. Put your why somewhere where you can see it every single day. And there's other tips you can do. You can put it above your bed, hang it up there, where every time you wake up, and I never did this, so I can't tell you to do this, but my mom did this and she like loved it. She put why she like ran her business. So it's completely inspired right into the business world. Put it right up there, why you play. Maybe it's a picture of Mike Trout, like, I want to be in the big leagues, boom, that's why I play. It's a picture of Marcus, I want to play for my brother. It's a picture of Rossi, maybe I want to play for Rossi because he's just done so much for my career and so much for my life. Yeah, see, and now we got the fist bump. Like, we just got this power connection, dude. Like, oh boy, I got Rossi's beautiful face right above my bed. Every time I wake up, I'm like, man, this guy's an angel sent from heaven. Like, bring him, let's go, I'm ready to go. But keep the why in mind. That's the biggest thing that, that you can learn today and to take throughout the rest of your life. No matter if it's baseball or it's your schoolwork, whatever it is that you decide to do the rest of your, your life. Like remember why you do it. Remember what purpose you have inside that drives you every single day. Because that's gonna take you to your destination. That's gonna take you through the peaks in the valleys, the deep, deep valleys of your life, right? It's gonna get you through all this nonsense, all this chaos. It's gonna push you through this wall. It's gonna help you plow through that thing and be like, I'm gonna uppercut to the freaking chest. And you're like, maybe not the chest, maybe the gut. Like, uppercut to the gut. I'm getting through to my destination, my why, my purpose, why I play. Really good question. Um, Ross, how are we doing on time? Where, where are we at right now? Uh, it's, we had 10.45? It's 10.55, so yeah. 10.55. Cool, cool. So, do you guys understand? I need to, like, I need to reflect on how do you guys kind of understand where I'm coming from here? Like, it's just helpful to see it. I'm very visual. So I need to see it. If I don't see it, I have to have freaking God Himself stand here speaking to me, like giving me His whole sermon, and then if I don't see it. Like I, I, it just doesn't resonate for me. But when I see this, I'm like, okay, simplify. I know where I'm at. I know that I need, like, I'm in my journey. Like this is your current experience. Like you're currently in your experience of your journey, whether it's right here or maybe some of us are right here. Maybe some of us are somewhere in here. It doesn't matter. But wherever we are in our journey, we can keep looking forward to our destination, something that serves us for the future, something that serves us for the rest of our lives. So, anxiety, the present, and the fear. Something I want to do for you guys real quick is a visualization exercise to put this all into perspective. This is something you can do anytime, and it doesn't have to be as long. I was going to say something I wanted to yeah. kind of backtrack it a little bit. Yeah, but that's something I see with a lot of guys through here, guys that I played with, uh, and just just watching the field. Not even that I associated with the guys I've heard about, but whatnot. But um, 
kind of like what Austin was talking about, the guy with the pickaxe that just keeps going and going and going. What I say a lot is guys that get right here, everything's going really well, and then they're like, well, everything's going well, so I can back off a little bit. I don't need to continue to work as hard as I was to get to this point because everything's going how I, how I want to go or exceeding how you want to go. So they start to back off a little bit. So keep pushing and pushing, and that's what separates the 1% that do make it to this side is because they don't let, they stay present instead of like, oh, I got this. They keep thinking they have to keep getting better and better and keep picking at it and picking at it every day so they can get to this side. But too often, we get it right here, everything's going perfect, they start to back off a little bit. And that's so when they start, that's where they hit a dead end. So just keep picking and picking and picking and staying, staying present and knowing you gotta keep working every single day to get to this. So that, I think that's coming, that goes with staying present, because if you don't stay present, then you can be like, oh, I'm doing well, I don't have to, I don't have to do it anymore. Instead, you gotta stay within yourself right this in this moment, and that's what's gonna keep you, so you don't miss a lift, so you don't miss a, a bag practice, so whatever it is, you don't miss those, those moments where, that are gonna help you get through this time. Absolutely, so, you know, it's huge, it's huge, and it puts things in perspective, you know, and like, if you have questions about it, like this, I don't expect you to just be an expert, like I'm not an expert, I'm learning every day about myself and about how to help me be the best version of myself to help you be the best version of yourself. Because the more we in turn, like, baseball is a selfish game, and why I think it's actually a selfish game is because if I'm impacting myself in a positive way, I can now impact my teammates in a positive way. So what I do is going to help somebody else on my team hopefully see that, see the leadership, or I can tell them, or I can teach them something that I know to where now as a team we get better. And that's what brings these great cultures together, that's what brings great teams and makes them great. Like they bond over, over each other. They bond over the people they have, not the coaches, not just scouts, not the parents, not the the post game spread, like any of the food that's given to them or all the donors that donate money. It's the actual team that you guys, if you guys were just a team, which you are, but if you were an actual team, like a high school program, and I put you all together, like to be our best version, we've got to come together. And like that means coming into the present together, that means practicing visualization or practicing any of the exercises, such as just knowing my why. Like, boom, one tip of the day, know my why. I leave here. I want you walking out this door knowing why I play. And if you don't know why you play, that's okay. That's totally okay. And if you need to go do some soul searching to understand why you do play and evaluate, that's totally okay. <laughs> totally okay. But my goal is for you when you walk out that door to reflect and be like, okay, these are a few reasons why I play. These are a few reasons why I do what I do. Sound good? So what I want you, what I want to do is visualization exercise. It's gonna take 10 minutes and we're done. 10 minutes and we're done. Super simple, super easy. Ross, do you have um, a do you have Spotify? I hope yeah. you spell it. Did you put on like a meditation or something calm? I mean, if you got players like that. And what I want you to do, we can move these chairs over here. So you have to spread out. Spread out your hands. Literally, you're just gonna lay down. If you want, you can sit in a seated position with your eyes closed, if that's more comfortable. But literally, like, I don't care if you're like this, like you can do whatever, like let the feet flop out, dude, like, like you're taking a nap. And all you're gonna do is just, we're gonna bring attention to our breath, bring attention to our thoughts, and to our mind. So go ahead and lay there, you can close your eyes, let the feet flop out. Start breathing in through your nose. This is Mackenzie Book. Out through your mouth. Slowly start bringing that awareness to your breath. Deep three to five second breath in through your nose. Hold it for a split second and blow that thing out. A deep breath. Exhale in through your mouth. I want you to feel the sensation of being comfortable. 
no right or wrong, no yes sir, no sir, just get comfortable with who we are, allowing those thoughts that are coming to your mind right now, whether it's good, bad, fearful, confident,
best version of yourself.
helps of the field glass when they in the zone. It's how like Clay Thompson does this all the time. He does this every day. He's picturing himself. My little crossover, boom. I'm going to drive the hole, boom. Off the wrong foot, boom. Like, the best of the best do this stuff. And not that everybody here is going to be a Mike Trout, but everybody here is going to go on to be something great in this world if you believe it. Because we all have an inner champion. Like, we all have something inside of us that says, like, we can do this. It's whether we believe up here. So we control this, we control this, we control this. Our mind, our heart, our gut, our intuition. We trust it. It all runs the line, right? So again, appreciate you guys. Break us out. Say Rossi on three. Rossi got this together. So we give you a Rossi chance.